Hi everyone, welcome to Wandering DMs. I'm Paul. And I'm Dan, and on this episode of Wandering DMs, we are going to figure out alignment. Should it be three-point system? Should it be nine-point system? Should it be zero-point system? Should it be seven-million-point <laughs> system? Finally figured out at the end of this hour, Wandering DMs. Won't that be nice, Paul? Hmm. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> Oh, I'd it. be more excited about it. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I don't. I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a. I think it's a highly subjective topic that we're going to talk about here, right? And uh, I know that I know that my opinions are not mainstream, so I'm prepared for a fair chunk of pushback. But that's fine. That's I'm fine. I'm not entirely sure anybody's viewpoints are mainstream anymore. Yeah. Well, let's get this one thing out of the way, right? Like Thanks the clever right memes, right? <laughs> okay. There's yeah. the clever memes, the, the three three by three grid that everybody really likes to show, and they're very clever and funny because you apply the D and D alignment system to whatever pop culture thing you want. Great, fine. That is not a reason for keeping any mechanic in your game. Uh, you know, there's that's interesting. So this dovetails into the whole business versus art problem of like, you know, the business demands pull your art in a direction you're not perfectly happy with. You're right. So Joshua has a good point. I should have I should have thrown in uh, uh, slightly more than six points. To the alignment would have been, or or the tau number of alignments would have been really spectacular. I I, I overlooked that. That's funny. Also, six point two eight, approximately six point two eight points. Uh, also, uh, five five. I guess fourth edition had a five point system. That's interesting. I don't it think did. I knew that. It did. I, think I knew that. Let's let's come back to it. That was yeah. absolutely. You know what? I, I I totally wanted to talk about that, and I didn't have it on my notes here. So, Joshua, thank actually thank you, and, and Ragnar, thank you for the uh, for the reminder about that. Let's go. So yeah, the number like the number of alignments has changed over and over and over again in um, in uh, D and D. And I guess just to make sure that I don't I don't forget about this, I'd like to go back to where this kind of alignment system first came from. And uh, so, of course, the the idea of these alignment systems comes from pulp literature, in particular, uh, Paul Anderson's uh, Three Hearts and Three Lions is probably the the very first seed of it. Mm -hmm. And then as we, it was expanded in Michael Moorcock's. Uh, Elric and Eternal Champion um, books and things like that. And so I think the very first place that this got started was in Anderson's Three Hearts, Three Lions, Chapter 3. And I'm just going to read one particular paragraph here, and probably this is going to spawn a whole bunch of different threads here. So Chapter uh, chapter 3 from Three Hearts, Three Lions. <clears throat> Main character name is named Holger. In conversation with another character, it's kind of summarized like this. Holger got the idea that a perpetual struggle went on between primeval forces of law and chaos. No, not forces exactly. Modes of existence, a terrestrial reflection of the spiritual conflict between heaven and hell. In any case, humans were the chief agents of Earth on Earth of law, though most of them were so only unconsciously, and some, witches and warlocks and evildoers, had sold out to chaos. Uh, law and chaos are capitalized here, just in case anyone's wondering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A few non-human beings also stood for law, but ranged against them was the whole middle world, which seemed to include realms like fairies, Trollheim, and the giants, an actual creation of chaos. Wars among men, such as the long-drawn long -drawn struggle between the Saracens and the Holy Empire, aided chaos. Under law, all men would live in peace and order and that liberty which only law could give meaning. But this was so alien to the middle worlders that they were forever working to prevent it and to extend their own shadowy dominion. So, a lot to unpack there. So, item number one, you notice that um, Anderson is using law and chaos capitalized, but he will also use the word good and evil mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as if they're synonyms. So they yep. certainly seem to be synonyms at the inception. Gygax said the same thing about when he was first writing D and D. Um, secondly, there's a there's a clear connection to um, Christian and and uh, Muslim and Jewish uh, real world religious faiths, and he expands on that later on. Um, third, there's a he clearly specifies particular creatures or beings like fairies, which we might call elves and trolls and giants, as being created by chaos. And the other thing in that book is that as 
forces of chaos take over more territory, it actually literally changes the geography and the weather and things like that. So chaos has a specific effect on the actual world. And then I guess finally I'll point out that later on in the book he points out that he seems to imply that the creatures of chaos don't have souls as opposed to humans and dwarves which supposedly do have souls which interact in a particular way. You, you see that in some D&D, like in first edition, there's some threads of that fact. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, so that's kind of the seed of it. Uh, Moorcock brought up the idea of neutrality that was in between law and chaos, and then that's what you get in Chainmail, and that's what you get in original D&D, and you're on from that point. Interesting. Interesting. Now, I don't have the chainmail text in front of me, but I do have the, the OD&D yeah. page here on alignment, which yeah. is the earliest I'm aware yeah. of it, um, yeah. which really gives you very little to go on, like most of OD&D, right? You've got... Uh, totally true. ...just says, character alignment before the game begins is not only necessary to select a role, yeah. but it's also necessary to determine what stance the character yeah. will take, law, neutrality, or chaos. And then it gives you a chart about yeah. what, uh, I guess, character types are limited as follows by this alignment. First yep. entry is men on every single axis. Law and neutrality, right. chaos, right. no problem. No problem for men. Right. Uh, other oddity I, I find about this chart here, uh, they've attempted to asterisk things that are in... An asterisk indicates that the name appears in both law and neutrality, and an underline indicates that it appears in both neutrality and chaos. Right. Men are not underlined, so... Whoops. Should underline right. men. Right. Um, right. But the interesting thing that then jumps out at me is that lycanthropes jump out as the first, like, all three. Lycanthropes can be all three. Uh, if, you look, if, you look, uh, if you look in Volume 2, uh, you know, there's five types of lycanthropes. Right, and, okay. Uh, each one has a specific alignment specifier, and between the five types, they wind up covering all three alignments. But that's not the same as saying any one lycanthrope type is any one alignment. It's specifically, it's the werebears that can be lawful that pick up the all three types for you. Yeah. Okay. Let me just the the one I'm look I am looking at the uh, the list it's the it's the last thing in the chainmail fantasy text the very last thing in the text and it's even more brief it's under the heading general lineup they don't even have the word alignment there it's just called general lineup and it just says it is impossible to draw a distinct line between good and evil fantastic figures. Three categories are listed below as a general rule for the war wargamer designing orders of battle involving fantastic creatures. Hmm. That's it. And it's more or less the same list you just showed, except it doesn't have men listed anywhere. Interesting. Other than that, it's about the same, yeah. I mean, that's interesting, yeah. too, to compared to the Paul Anderson quote, right, where it sounds yeah. like men are... Are they on? Are they capable of, of existing across the entire spectrum, or they're just not even conscious of it? It's unclear... Right? Like, what? I have struggled with that. Yeah. I have yeah. struggled with that in my D&D game. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agreed. And then, just I guess just to give a little bit, where did things go from there? A um, couple years after that, uh, that law-neutral chaos element, Gygax in um, supplement, I think, four? Supplement three, supplement four to, to D&D's and w, to, uh, to original D&D. Uh, started saying, well, you know, maybe some lawful creatures can also be evil and some chaotic creatures might possibly be good in some cases. Um, hmm. Hmm. As of uh, first edition, that turned into the nine-point alignment system. Yep. Uh, the BX series still maintained the three-point alignment system all so through I've the got, 80s. I've got BX and first and third and fifth here all open to the alignment great, section great, so I can great, uh, read great. us some, some chunks. Awesome. Uh, what I find most interesting as we progress through the additions is not so much the different axes, which is interesting that it that it expands yeah. and contracts, yeah. um, but that the the way it's presented to the reader and the importance of it and how to use it changes dramatically from first yeah. through third through fifth, right? Yeah. So in first edition, I'll just read you the opening paragraph here on alignment. Uh, after generating the abilities of your character, selecting his or her race, and deciding upon a class, it is necessary to determine the alignment of the character. It is possible that the selection of the class you, your character uh, will profess has predetermined alignment. A druid is neutral, a paladin is lawful good, and a thief can be neutral or evil. An assassin is always evil. Yet except for druids and paladins, such restrictions still leave latitude. The thief can be lawful neutral, lawful evil, neutral evil, chaotic evil, chaotic neutral, neutral, or even neutral good, and the assassin has nearly as many choices. The alignments possible for characters are described below. And then it gives a chunk about each 
of the nine alignment types here, uh, and a general thing about how they view the world. Right, right. This. You know, it's interesting that as time goes on, it seems to inevitably, these things inevitably tend to get more flexible. Um, and wait, so wait, whatever. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I missed. Right. I missed the, the most important part of the first edition text, which is the last paragraph. Right. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to cut you off, Dan, because this is this is too good. Not I, to I want to hear it. Yeah. I want to hear it. Naturally, there are all variations and shades of tendencies within each alignment. The descriptions are generalizations only. A character. A character can be basically good in its true neutrality or tend towards evil. It is probable that your campaign referee will keep a graph of the drift of your character on the alignment chart. This is affected yeah. by the actions and desires of your character during the course of each adventure and will be reflected yeah. on the graph. You may find that these actions are such as to cause the declaration alignment to be shifted towards or actually to some other. Mm -hmm. Did you ever keep a graph, Dan? I did. Really? I did. A I wow. absolutely tried to do that. I absolutely had a graph of my player character's alignment um, in the 80s. Did it work well? No, it yeah. did not. And I, it, it, I'm so glad you just br brought that up because part of <laughs> part of my part of my observation is be based on those kinds of things. And in the in the first edition DM's guide, there's a long section about possibly changing alignment. The DM will track your behavior yeah. and at some point may declare that you've changed alignment. And the, that kind of language got in my head and I, I want that to work right. I could, n I could never make that work you know, yeah. without any objective uh, criteria. I could really never, ultimately the point where you change was always DM fiat and I always felt bad about that and I could kind of never pull the trigger on that. So I absolutely had a graph and the steps got smaller and smaller and smaller right. As, right. That's, as the characters got towards the boundary and I could never really pull the trigger on it. That's the question, right? Is like, what what are the yeah. values on that yeah. graph? What, what, yeah. How, yeah. how do you judge an action, yeah. a specific, yeah. oh, that's worth minus 3.7 on the alignment yeah. scale. Like, what? <laughs> what? For, for me, I have always <laughs> actually, I, I have always felt that there was missing, if you're gonna do that, yeah. uh, you, you're, you're missing objective criteria and within the last week or two, I've been like searching for people attempting to have objective alignment criteria. Uh, for example, when they've you know they've had D and D video games, uh, I think like Baldur's Gate and stuff like that, where they did have they were tracking alignment behaviors. Any particular interaction could possibly move your alignment around. They had specific point based stuff, and so I was looking at that in the last week, what the rules were for I that. Mean, well, that's... I, I always felt that that was a, that was a lack. I mean, that's maybe an interesting point here that like maybe alignment fits better when you yeah. uh, are taking that distanced DM perspective and talking strictly about right. NPCs or monsters, right? When you're talking right. about uh, running a simulation of a, of a fantasy world, then okay, maybe now you're going to score the different characters on stuff and you're not worried about it because you're not talking to a player, you're not talking to another human and saying, well, you th were chaotic good, but now you're chaotic neutral. Right, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. You're like you know, yeah. just you're just on paper saying, oh, I guess I guess this NPC did this thing. I guess they're chaotic neutral. Let me let me read you a little bit of the BX text, which I think is interesting because it takes yeah. just as hard a line as one E, but it's a little more okay. handholdy in the text and gives us okay. a little more to go on. Okay. Um, so it says players may choose the alignment they feel best fits their character. A player does not have to tell other players what alignment he or she has picked, but must tell the DM. Most lawful characters will reveal their alignment if asked. Uh, by the way, BX is still using the three, uh, the yep. three point alignment, yep. just lawful, yep. neutral, chaotic. Yep. When picking alignments, the character should know that chaotics cannot be trusted, even by other chaotics. A chaotic character does not work well with other player characters. These alignments give guidelines for characters to live by. The characters will try to follow these guidelines, but may not always be successful. If a DM feels that a player is not keeping to a character's chosen alignment, the DM may suggest a change of alignment or give the character a punishment or penalty. What kind of punishment or penalty? Who knows? Doesn't tell us. Um, the other really interesting thing I found about the BX text is it gets into the nitty gritty of the alignment languages. Right. Um, and then talks about how... Um, um, somewhere in here, I'm not finding it, but somewhere talks talks about actually when changing alignment, you lose access to the alignment language. Right. Which is, I don't know, Weird. alignment language. Yeah. 
first of all, I'm not a fan of alignment in general. At this point, I'm done with it. I don't want it at all anymore. There's my crazy, my crazy hot before, take. Don't want before it. Before we move on to that, I'll, yeah, just, I'll yeah. just point out on the question of like, what are the effects of alignment change? What, the, what are the punishments? As, yeah. as Ragnar, I think, pointed out, the first edition DMs guide has specifics like lose a level. Lose a level Crazy. and also um, uh, 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 increased training time. So first edition technically had several weeks of training time when you advance a level that, at great gold piece expense. And if you weren't playing in character and you weren't playing in alignment, that got expanded for, for more time and more price. Right. So those were among the, uh, the, major, the major penalties there. So I yeah. think I think we've yeah. talked about alignment language on the show in the past, and we probably both agree that it's just so weird and uh, changes the game so, in such a strong way that it's maybe not worth it. <laughs> I have wrestled with that. Now I'll say this, right? So I and so I'm certainly more of a fan of the linear three point alignment system than the mm -hmm. nine point alignment system, and and we have all spent time. I think many of us have spent time with the kind of interesting philosophical debates about how does the, the two-dimensional nine-point alignment map to the real world, and, and would this, what alignment would this historical figure be, neutral good or chaotic neutral, or that, who, where would uh, Churchill be? Where would uh, uh, Lao Tzu be? Mm -hmm. um, kind of interesting. But I do think that, for me, the, the, the linear three-point thing has more of a mythic feel. It ties into... The, the older pulp texts, which itself ties into ancient mythology. There's a, there's a living world and there's a world of the dead, right? There's two or three domains is mythically what happens. So I really kind of like tying into that um, chthonic uh, view of a whole lot of myths. But, I have lost, I have completely, but, but my point is that yeah. also for alignment languages, right? Yeah. I think that uh, if you're going to talk alignment languages, it's sort of kind of defensible with three points of there's, there's the, the dark speech and there's the, the unified demi-human speech possibly, but n with nine points, why on earth would there be nine different alignment languages? That is really hard to digest. The, the, this this bizarre text in BX about how, and I'm sure it's in first edition as well somewhere, of how when right. you shift alignment, you immediately lose access to the old alignment language yeah. and gain the new one. It's just like what? It's, it's so hard work? to interpret. And then it's and so then, hard to interpret. I I I I see where you're coming from on the three. Right. You know, it makes maybe makes more sense that there's a dark speech and yeah, a yeah. good speech, but it makes. You know, with only three of them, now we've got yeah. basically a universal translator kind of situation where anyone right. can talk to anything, which I right. also don't like. I agree. Yeah, I don't disagree. I, I like. I have struggled with that. I've tried to make it work, and I've more or less. I've never really become happy with that. Now, let me tell you the the really baffling thing that I learned sometime in the last year. So, on the 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 original D and D seventy seventy four forums. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the people who up until recently was very active was, was Mike Mornard, who was one of the very first players in Gygax's campaign. He said the following, which blew my mind. So original D&D, &D, it says you can learn, it technically says you can learn any language other than an opposed alignment language. Mm -hmm. So read narrowly, that only, that means you can learn other alignment languages, just if you're lawful, you can't learn chaos and vice versa. So what Mike said that everybody did in Gygax's original campaign is everybody made a neutral character mm -hmm. and then for their first two languages learned Law and Chaos. And, and then could, could talk, talk to, to everybody. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that just blew my mind as a crazy short-circuiting of all the ink that gets spilled for all the different languages in the world and how you learn them, and the fact that swords have some but not others, and the read languages spell, and the tongue spell. I'm like, why would you just blow up all that interesting stuff yeah. uh, in order to pat yourself on the back and say, aren't I a clever player? I outsmarted the language rules. Well, that, it, it, that might, for me, that might have been the stake through the heart of the whole alignment language thing. It, it's like, clearly, they, just, they, they, yeah. they used it as a short circuit for languages yeah. entirely. I mean, it, it, that, that whole argument sounds like this very sort of puerile style of play of like, oh, yeah. well, you know, we're going to outsmart the DM by listening at every door. Oh, well, I'm going to outsmart the players by putting, you know, worms in the doors that eat their brains. And oh, you know, right. Oh, well, we're going to stab every door before we open it. Like, is this fun? <laughs> 
<laughs> really? I, you Did know, you have I, a little I, trust I'm, in each other. <laughs> a little bit. I don't know. A little bit. I got to. I got to. Bur- so we. Well, I got to. So. <laughs> The, the 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 horrible door the horrible door things the um the rot grubs you know, you're thinking ear seekers but I'm thinking rot grubs yeah made, I'm, one, I'm, of the, made one of the most fun times when I was playing with Steve Buckley actually yeah, yeah he, he remembers he, that he, well, he got jumped on rot grubs I just threw fire on yeah, him and yeah. we will always remember that yeah but uh, but it's not and 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 I actually went the wrong direction with rot grubs because really what I should have been talking about right. is mimics right because it's classically the mimic that then caused the players right. to stab every door before they open it oh it might turn gotcha. into a monster so right. let's stab it first right. Right, 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 right. I don't know. I I don't need that nonsense in the game. Don't need that. Nonsense. I don't use okay. many mimics. Mimics are not my my go to thing. So I'm. So here's yeah. here's an interesting thing, right? Um, the the. I might at least argue that alignment has no place for players, right? Um, so maybe if you if you're not going to join me on the just get rid of it entirely, like maybe it doesn't belong for players because it's it's a rule that pushes us in that direction of well, your player wouldn't do that. Right, and that's just, I man, way to kill fun at the tables to have a DM look at I, a player and say your player wouldn't do that. I would never want to do that, but again, I would want to say, well, now your alignment's something different. Right, and then we get into the weird, hazy, undefined. How many points do I lose, and what are exactly the penalties, and who cares anyway? I don't know. It strikes me as really weird. It strikes me I, as that, really to me, weird. That's all. Just... That seems like fixable. I feel like that we can do that. We have the we have the technology. I ask um, why? Why fix it? What is it serving? When have you had a fun moment based on this? Legitimate question. Legitimate <laughs> question. And it, yeah, it's something I struggle with. I, like yeah. I feel that it, it's it's in there, and we agree that in Chainmail and original D and D, it's v- very briefly dealt with, and. Judging from Mike Morton's experience, they kind of just hand wave. They practically hand wave the whole thing in the first place. So I think I agree. If it's going to be in there, and it's going to be a cosmic force in the universe, I want it to make a difference, and I want it to be more yep. relevant than it often is. And I do think that that's a bit of a I, missed, missed pitch. I understand it coming from these origins of like Paul Anderson and uh, Moorcock, right. right, in influencing right. this stuff. But I feel like right. there are details that are so specific to the world that those two authors were presenting that unless you're playing a game literally set in the world of, that it doesn't belong. It's too restrictive. It's too restrictive to allow for this, you know, willy nilly any fantasy. You can you can adapt these rules to whatever you know to your own milieu kind of attitude. Um, they're they're just too much. It's like the first thing that's got to go, unless you're saying we are playing a, a three hearts and three lions. Is that the name of the book? Hearts yeah, and, yeah, three hearts and three lions. Unless you're <laughs> saying we're playing in that universe. Okay, fine, fine. Now, okay, well then, then, then I want more nitty gritty rules, and I want more crunch into it. Okay, well, how many points? How many lawful points do I have? And how do we rate how many lawful points I lose for doing X? I think okay that that great great stab Bob. <laughs> great great argument. Um, I don't think that I don't think that D and D is entirely. I mean, I'm thinking original D and D, but I don't think it's entirely anchorless. I think the offer originally made was you want to play Conan, you want to play something like Gandalf, you want to play something like Elric. Those are the things that got named. Initially, sure. okay. It, what, it, how does alignment yeah. make sense in Conan? <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. I've stumped him. It doesn't make any sense in Conan. Maybe evil priests are evil. Sure, but are they evil because they have this codified system that forces them to be evil, or are they evil because they're just bastards who worship a snake god? Right. Like I don't see why I need a mechanic for this. I. <clears throat> and I think it's more interesting. It's much more interesting when it is not specified, right? And then we can have cases where you have somebody who bucks the trend, right? You have generally uh, evil wizards summon orcs to do their bidding, and they eat man flesh, and it's they're horrible, horrible creatures. But 
maybe there's an orc who bucks that trend and is actually wants to do the right thing or vice versa right maybe there's we live in a land of goodly kings and elves and dwarves but there is secretly someone hiding in our society who is trying to sacrifice us all to a snake god yeah, I mean that's all fair, and I mean you know right out of Anderson, he you know one of the thing one of the very first thing he says is uh, you know um, you know the, the the like dwarves who are normally lawful who have been turned to chaos are extremely important tools for the side of chaos because they're one of the few beings that can destroy a good shrine, for example. Yep. So I don't think anybody and and someone pointed out even the very first published D and D adventure, Steading of the Hill Giant Chief. You've got uh, a, a you know the orcs are all slaves of the giants, and there's an ongoing rebellion in the basement mm. that somebody says, "Hey, among your best options here, you should go ally yourselves with the orcs in the basement." Um, and that's yeah. the very first D and D adventure is saying, you know, orcs can be your allies. Yeah, um, I'm not so. I'm not saying you shouldn't have like good versus evil in your campaign as a as a an element to your story. I'm just saying there's no reason to mechanize it. Well, what I is it? I mean, what I mean, what, what what is good and evil if not a universal force? Like, is it just a, is it just a philosophical descriptor? I mean, is it just, is it is yeah. it entirely relativistic in a postmodern sense, or in the, <laughs> or in the in the D and D cosmos, is it an actual real right. force? Right, right. Well, then you got to start answering questions that D and D has never answered. Right, like what is the meaning of life? Why? What what are the gods actually doing? How much control do they have? What is their relationship to each other and to the to the cosmos at large? Right, and frankly, do these they are even things... exist in the first place? <laughs> right. I feel like these are things. Honestly, when I was playing second edition in sort of late high school, early college, right. these are the things I was trying to answer for myself yeah. before I started right. any campaign. I'd be like, okay, I'm going right. to sit down a campaign. Step one: right. write my pantheon and figure right. out how they interact and what it is thereafter. And what is the meaning of life? Which is a big yeah, heavy thing on, to do at the beginning of a freaking campaign. Yeah, yeah. And on and on my end, like I think there's a lot of pulp literature, like Howard and um, uh, 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 good Lord Daniel uh, Lieber, Howard and Lieber, yeah. um, who uh, who seem to clearly imply that. that um, that the the there might be supernatural agents, but beneficial gods probably are a hallucination. Probably. Um, let me ask this. Let, yeah. me, let me just come back to this. What alignment is Conan? Um. Geez. Um. Let's see. Well, under which system are we talking about? The three point or the nine point? Let's say three point system. Make it make it easier. Great. He's chaotic. Uh, no, he's neutral. No, nope, he's chaotic. According to uh, the description... Supplement 4, officially... <laughs> the official D&D publication, Supplement 4, Gods Have Many Gods and Heroes, page 45, says that he's officially neutral. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can, I can buy I can buy neutral. Uh, so I was going by the moral description of chaos in uh, my copy of BX, which says, it is the belief that life is random and that chance and luck rule the world. Everything happens by accident and nothing can be predicted. Laws are made to be broken as long as a person can get away with it. Sounds to me like Conan. Uh, you know, reasonable, reasonable. Um, I'm going to look up what he because because yeah. you know because again, Conan was the very is the very first name, right? You go to Chainmail yeah. Fantasy, right? The very first thing is like, let's do some Conan. That's the first name that comes out. And um, Gygax spent a lot of time on him. He kept coming back to him. Actually, uh, there's a really r big article in Dragon Magazine at some point where he gave statistics like for every five years of his life and basically all those rules and statistics turned into the barbarian class later on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so it, it is kind of i think worth thinking about just at least for a couple minutes yeah um, i mean ultimately neutrality right in these rules comes down to the um and the, i remember when i was playing in the in the late 80s early 90s uh, there was debate about whether neutrality was this view that there must be a balance, that this sort of a kind of druidic, yeah. like all things must come in balance, we must have both good and yeah. evil, or I don't give yeah. a shit, right? Is it, is it, yeah. eh, screw you guys and your, your cosmos and your ethos, I'm just going to do whatever the hell I want. 
right? Yeah. Although I'd argue the latter almost feels a little more chaos to me than than neutral, but but the idea being that I just eschew the whole thing. I just I'm look. I'm looking out for number one. I, I like, you know, I think, I, and it's quite possible that, you know, p- people that follow our channel and are commenting on right now are, are probably more tied into the old school stuff and probably more tied into the, the, the universal forces of the three points. And certainly I like chaos being committed, dedicated to destroying the world and or at least destroying the world of humans. You know, and um, when I'm and not... Run- just Sorry. I do what I want. Yeah, yeah. When I've run O D and D, and and tried to you know, it's generally when you're yeah. running O D and D, often at a yeah. convention, and you're a bunch of people who've probably yeah. not played it in a long time or ever, and they're used to more modern, you know, nine point alignment, et cetera, et cetera. When they ask right. me about alignment, my, you know, until recently, where I've decided, screw it, I'm getting rid of it. Uh, until recently, what I would have said is, th- think of the word in the most literal fashion as to who you are aligned with. When the wars yeah. come, right. Right. which side will you join? Right. Uh, it right. doesn't, and and then I say, and then I will even go so far as to say, it has nothing to do with morality. It is just which creatures, when the big fight comes, right? When the ar- when the the war of five armies happens in the Hobbit, which side are you on? That's interesting. That's interesting. And for me, I, I quite often throw it at Cthulhu. Is when Cthulhu comes, do you fight against him? Then yeah. you're lawful. Do you run away? Then you're neutral. Do you help him destroy the world? Then you're chaotic. <laughs> then you're chaotic. That's, that's the primary. That's the primary uh, hook that I put my hat on. Yeah. Um, so I will point out before we run out of time here. I just want to. I still have my my third and my fifth edition books open here. I want to point out right. it's interesting to note that Wizards has progressively walked away from how restrictive yeah. alignment is. Right. So I'm looking here even even as early as the third edition book, uh, the text here, which I gotta say, who decided to put text on this background? My God, I need a I need a magnifying it glass was, to read this. This it is was rough. New and it was new and edgy. Ooh, ooh yo yo. Um. It says, alignment is a tool for developing your character's identity. It is not a straitjacket for restricting your character. Each alignment represents a broad range of personality types or personal philosophies, so two lawful good characters can be quite different from each other. And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It goes on with more, more flowery language about how you can still play your character however you want. Um, and here's the interesting thing. I think a lot of folks have hung their hat on alignment, for, especially for PCs, as a way of, as a defining characteristic. Like, if you play, like you and I have, Dan, where we come to the table with very little in, in our heads about the character, we don't write pages of backstory, we just go, yeah, we'll see yeah, what yeah. the dice tell me. Right. Um, then it's a point to hang my hat on and say, okay, well, I know my character is, has a high strength and a low intelligence mm-hmm. and is lawful. Right. Okay. Right. These are these are guiding posts for me to start developing a character. Right. right. I think fifth edition is now pointing us even further away from that with its backgrounds. Oh yeah. And it's interesting oh, yeah. to note that alignment in the fifth edition book comes in the personality and background section. Right. Yeah. Just just here, just yeah. before the the whole you know, which I think is a better take. Honestly, I I would I think it's more interesting to know to have a one line of text that says I was raised by thieves in a big city, than to say, I'm neutral evil. Yeah, it's interesting because we're you know obviously you and I are using that text for our characters on the big bad, mm-hmm. and it's it's working quite well for us. Um, in my original D and D games, you know, I have uh, an NPC uh, generator and a personality generator that spits out just three things: spits out an alignment and two adjectives, two personality adjectives. And I find that I can do a pretty good job. You know, uh, hell, people stand up for Im- an improv comedy and just get one word. And I find that I can do a pretty good job with any particular NPC with just those three words, one of which is alignment, and um, spin out a character on the fly based on that. I agree you don't need much. Um, I feel like that, I, I'm actually happier with that because my list of adjectives is like 800 long. And hmm. the list of, ba- like already having used them for the big bad, I'm finding that I'm starting to see repetitions in the moderately small number of backgrounds that they've got there in fifth edition. So 
within a couple months, I'm starting to find find that a little bit restrictive or a little bit repetitive. Yep, I can um, see that. It definitely feels like like after you've been playing fifth edition for a while, it feels like the first thing I want to look for a supplement for that adds. Oh, new backgrounds, great. Let me. I want okay. that. Shove that in there. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, I will say that clearly alignment's getting devalued. If you look at D and D Beyond, if you look at the character sheets, the alignment is way down there. It's way down there. Like D and D Beyond, you see all those background descriptors first, and alignment is like almost the last thing. And so, just based on the direction it's going, and if they made another edition, alignment wasn't there, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, just real quick, here's here's the here's a little a couple of sentences uh, that fifth edition has for us about alignment, and it is let actually me, much shorter. The text. Let me, let me just say, let me, yeah. I, I guess we should say so. You've gone third edition, and as multiple people have pointed out in the comments, let's just briefly talk about fourth edition that you and I didn't play. But you know, having had the the two dimensional axis. Mm. In 1st edition, 2nd edition, 3rd edition, 3.5, 4th edition attempted to go back to a single axis. Interesting. They, tried, they attempted to flatten it out back to a single axis that had five points, and they had law and neutral and chaos, and kind of like you've, you've pointed out recently, Paul, you know, for IP purposes, major, major things that you identify with D&D are lawful good or chaotic evil. So they had those two specific things on the far ends. So your, your, yeah, your single dimension five point alignment was lawful good, lawful neutral, chaotic, chaotic evil. Is that right, or did they call the middle ones good and evil? Someone in the comments tell me. But anyway, that's they, I know the, the 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 ones on the end were lawful good, chaotic evil, and then you had three that we would normally think of in the middle. And they attempted to have the single the single linear alignment, and then here we are with fifth edition. They flip back to the two dimensions. Yeah, hmm. so it's basically I'm saying it's so lawful good, good, neutral, evil, chaotic evil. Interesting. Um, fourth edition, yeah. Hmm. 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 Stick with it. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, they broke with a lot of traditions in fourth edition, so I'm not terribly surprised to hear that. They did. Um, yeah. And I don't, unfortunately, don't have the text because I'd be curious actually to see the text to see how much emphasis they put on it. Again, I, I feel like less important is the points, the number of points, and more important is how. What kind of words are the authors using to tell me how important yeah. it is to my character? Yeah. Right. Already in third edition, we saw that it's not a straitjacket, and I should, you know, there should be a lot of variation within any one alignment. Yeah. Here's here's fifth edition's take. Yeah. yeah. It says um, these brief summaries of the nine alignments describe the typical behavior of a creature with that alignment. Individuals might vary significantly from the typical behavior, and few people are perfectly and consistently faithful to the precepts of their alignment. So, yeah. so why is it there at all? <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's kind of been under, undergoing a slow motion explosion. Yeah. Like, yeah. like initially, it's clearly cosmic forces that you're aligned with, uh, like an Anderson, and mm -hmm. what alignment you are actually changes the geography, changes literally changes what the land looks like around you. It's, it's you know, and and some creature types are actually a born of one or the other. And, um, uh, you know, that, again, that ties, I feel like that ties into mythology of like the Seelie Court and fairies being repelled by holy churches and things like that, very, you know, physically. And as time goes on, and as you, if you, if you scrub that out yeah. and you make it more of a personal philosophical thing, it starts to just kind of fade away and like, yeah. why are we doing it at all? See, and I like it. Honestly, when you're talking about like, oh, it's this strange alien thing, it's part of the Sealy Court, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think that is interesting as long as we keep it alien, right? As long as it's this is not for players, right? This is a part yeah. of my world crafting, that, and that's that's consistent with the Paul Anderson books, right? Where the main character is this stranger from another place where none of this makes any sense. Oh, I, I guess I'm not going to be able to totally agree with that because there's yeah. quite a bit of language there tying into it clearly connects with because he's actually been uh, he's been shot in an, in in a fight in World War Two, and right. um, he right. let me see here uh, here's a, here's a paragraph from Chapter Eleven. Yeah. Um, uh, this business of chaos versus law, for example, turned out to be more than religious dogma. It was a practical fact of existence here. He was reminded of the second law of thermodynamics, the tendency of the physical universe towards disorder and level entropy. Or wait a minute, didn't it in his own world as well? What had he been fighting when he fought the Nazis, but a resurgence 
of archaic horrors that civilized men had once believed were safely dead. So actually, as, as Anderson goes on, he very, he very tightly knits the two worlds together. But it's um, an aha it's moment for the character, right? The character is only just realizing yeah. that these laws apply yeah. in a yeah. world that, that he's com familiar and comfortable with, right? Yeah. Right. And you definitely don't get that aha moment when you're sitting there rolling out a character sheet and I have to fill in the blank. Which alignment are you? Oh, okay, all right. Well, I guess I'm chaotic neutral. <laughs> I'm in the chaotic neutral well, you know, club. I speak the chaotic the, neutral language, right? <laughs> the other problem with the nine point alignment I have is is this. Everybody wants to be chaotic good. <laughs> Every, it's weird to me. Yeah, it's weird that yeah. you have a nine points, but then everybody wants to be chaotic good. And I was, you know, I have been in classes and people like, in my opinion, I would be chaotic good. And I'm like, yeah, no kidding, really? Oh, big surprise! Right? <laughs> and I'm reminded of actually, I think years ago, I heard an executive for I think the USA Network on TV, right? And they were saying. Every, we, every single character, every single lead character on every single one of our shows needs to be, must be a rogue with a heart of gold. <laughs> every single show is going to feature a rogue with a heart of gold. We, we don't book anything else on our entire oh, network. God. Right. Everybody yep. loves the camera. They're good. Yep. I sort of did yep. something sketchy, but when the chips were down, I came through. And um, I kind of like, again, I kind of like the three-point alignment for like, you know, Get off the fence! <laughs> Get off the fence and choose a side, man. It's, but it's, it's, but it's, we, it's, can't we all be Han Solo? I mean, come on. We're all Han Solo, right? <laughs> oh, man. Well, if you put Nobody it like wants to that, be Luke. I, pretty... <laughs> I, I wanted to be Luke. I'm the guy that wanted to be Luke. I, 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 I hated Halloween. I, yeah. I posted on I hated Halloween. And, 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 and specifically refused it with ex one single exception. One time in high school, I went as Luke Skywalker. That's yes, great. I did. That's great. That's great. Now, from, from Return of the Jedi when he was cool and wearing black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have a little edge. Can't be, can't be pure, pure goody two shoes, man. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's, that's delightful. That's delightful. Oh. I'm that guy. Um, so, so, so to be clear, do you actually? So, you actually don't use alignment in your games nowadays. Your, your I, BX type games. I have not. Uh, so, first of all, I haven't run a BX game yeah. in some time okay. at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, this is mostly a very uh, academic conversation for me right now. Okay. Uh, okay. Frankly, my 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 thoughts and opinions are changing. Um, yeah. You know, I will say, you know, we had that. That episode recently where James Mendes Hodes came on and talked about race right, uh, yeah, yeah. on on the show, I think it's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. I think it's a conversation that I was on the other side of ten years ago, and uh, okay. I will say something okay. that you never hear on the internet, which is I've I've listened to the arguments, I've thought about it critically, and I've changed my mind. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> So, get yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that, that's, so that's why we do this. Yeah, and that's why yeah. we. That's why you and I have have had these conversations since before we had a show. Obviously, yeah. so. Yeah. Um, so I've been yeah. becoming progressively less happy with alignment. I will say, when I. Yeah first jumped into BX 10 years ago yeah. um, then I was I was at that point I was like I'm re-exploring the old stuff I haven't played this in forever or ever buy the book I'm gonna play as by the book as possible right. and I was all in it's all in on alignment right. Right, right, and right, right. then as we've played over the years and as I moved more towards playing OED style games you know again I moved into I think someone pointed out in the chat this sort of Jeff Reance style uh, Jeff Reance definitely influenced me very strongly in a lot of things so Congrats to Jeff. Um, he uh, this this notion of like it's literal, you know, alignment like yeah. treaties and stuff, and has nothing to do with morality. Yeah. Um, so that's the direction I had moved, and that's the last time I ran any of this stuff. That's generally what I was playing with. Now gotcha. the question is, when did it ever come up in the game? And the answer is almost never. Right, the only cases where it's going to come up in a game are the rare spells like detect yeah. evil. Right, mm -hmm. detect good. Yeah. yeah, and and frankly, for those, I am 
very willing to interpret on the fly. If I've set up a plot where there's an evil cult of snake worshippers and they're making, they're doing human sacrifices and you come up to their altar and you cast detect evil, I don't need a rule that says that they're chaotic for me to tell you, yes, the altar radiates evil. Seems pretty obvious to me. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I, you know, th there's a great point there about it, how, how often does alignment come up and make a difference in your games. And I, I agree, not enough for me. Mm -hmm. And I will even say, you even go back to Chainmail Fantasy and says, here's your lineup of Law Neutral Chaos. And it, it still doesn't put any restriction even there. It doesn't specifically say you've got to pick one of these three types. And we, you know, as, as you know, myself and disinvited artists as well, Garbani have a war game every Saturday, uh, every Saturday night on the Wandering DMs channel. And uh, we've got monsters and they're, they've, they're one of the three alignments, but we mix and match. Last night, Isabel had chaotic goblins with neutral men and I had lawful elves with, yep. with neutral men. And we mix and match and there's no reason you can't have two warring tribes of orcs go at each other. Um, and so even to be, even at the outset, I'm like, did you really need that? Does it have an effect? Does it does it literally have an effect on the game of chain mail? It actually doesn't. Yeah. Um, let me tell you. Uh, let me give you a, a counter example of a case where yeah. it came up where I was happy to be not feel constrained by alignment, which is specifically right. for my regular group. I've been running right. uh, some content that includes Dyson's Delve. So if anybody's watched okay. our 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 birthday game from a year, a little more than a year ago, uh, or read any of my blog articles, you know, I've done a lot of research into Dyson stuff. So here, here's this new group going in. Um, in the first couple of levels, there's a whole bunch of goblins that have some leadership that is hobgoblins, which is interesting. Yeah. And then further down, there's another section of goblins who have a goblin king, and the two groups right. are separated by some physical barriers. So one of the things you have to answer when you're running that adventure is, what's up with these two groups? Are they the same group uh, and they're just tenuously connected? Are they different groups? Are they different clans? Whatever. you got to figure right. that out for yourself. Right. So in this case, I'm going under the assumption that they're different clans or different groups. They're not connected. The party goes through, just just wipes, just runs through the through the first level or two, killing all the goblins. And then one of them, one of the characters is very much playing this like, I'm an elf, therefore I hate goblins. They're all you know, vile little creatures, we need to exterminate them. Right. Uh, they kill everything up until the final room where the last hobgoblin boss and and he's there with like his lieutenant and two other goblins. Right. They're in the last right. room trying to figure out, and I'm like trying to do my little role play bit of like, what are they going to do? What are we going to do? What, how we defend ourselves? And the party decides at that point, we're tapped, we need to get out of here. They turn and they leave, and they go hole up to rest. And I'm like, you've left me with two hobgoblins and two goblins, the leadership, you've right. wiped out their entire right. force. Right. What do they do, right? right? What do they do? And I'm running through the options in my head, and I'm like, well, we're way too weak to launch an attack on them. Even if they're camping like there's right. four of us, what are we going to do? Nothing. Right. Like, right. realistically, the, the right thing to do is run away. They flee, and you never see them again. And they take their treasure with them, and that's not very exciting, right? That's, that's a kind of a letdown of an, of an ending. So I decide, what if they surrender, right? They're hobgoblins, they have a military background. What if they say, right. you have proven your superiority. What are your terms for surrender? <laughs> and so that's what I had them do. They delivered a note that basically said, we recognize your superiority, Great. surface dwellers. What are your terms of surrender? That's that's freaking amazing, Paul. That was, was that's great. It's delightful, great. and it freaked the party yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Half of them are like, "This right. is a trap. Exactly. We're gonna exactly. die." Exactly. Right. 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 I right. was really exactly. hoping that some one of them right. would take them up and be like, "We got to go and talk to them and find out," because like maybe right. now they have a couple allies, and and maybe right. they'll learn more about what's deeper below in the dungeon because now they yeah, actually yeah, yeah. have befriended some yeah. some creatures, yeah. even though maybe friends yeah. is too yeah. nice a term for what they have they've yeah. they've at yeah. least gotten some kind of weird tenuous neutrality towards these yeah. i thought that was super interesting yeah. and super fun um so so I, I again I, eschewing eschewing alignment at that point yeah. and just saying like what does this force of goblins and hobgoblins who had been attacking surface dwellers do when they're reduced to this number what do they do I don't see why that's incompatible with the alignment thing. I, I mean, I, I, I mean, that's 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 pure gold. Uh, I'm so glad, so glad to hear about that. 
Um, the fact, the, frankly, the fact that it freaks the players out worse well, is among the best parts of of a of a, tra- of a pivot like that. The downside um, is, though, that players who have the very the much more traditional mindset are going to say, yeah. "Well, they're goblins; they're evil. Let's just kill them," and they're just going to stop that storyline from happening. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the problematic. That's probably one of the problematic things of of of, of classic D anD D, and I don't know how that plays to current players. But I mean, even you know, I at, at a very young age, I think I had players who charmed a bugbear or three, and with a charm monster or something like that had them under their dominion for a month and treated them well. I mean, actually, you guys did that with the gnolls in, yep. uh, in the yep. Hall of the Fire Giant King. And after a month or two, I was like, well, I, I guess they're neutral now. I guess, I guess yeah. now they, I guess, I guess at this point, I guess it's, they're, they're sort of neutral at this point. And it's Raiden Anderson. It's Raiden Anderson. Dwarves are, are normally lawful, but if you, can, if you can, you know, corrupt one of them to the chaos side, they become really super important. So, um, you know, ha- having having some amount of, of stepwise transition, I think, has been always part of it. And I think, I, you know, I think should be and makes for all kinds of interesting movements like that. So I don't think you need to get rid of alignment in order to uh, in order to make that possible. I don't think you need to get rid of alignment, but it is yeah. freeing, right? And if I had had that conversation during session yeah. zero with my players and said, yeah. there is no alignment... Maybe they would yeah. have come in with a different perception. Oh, it just it ripped my heart out. It ripped <laughs> my heart out, taking the alignment away. Uh, it's I'd... really, it's really hard for me to get over that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you got rid of clerics. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. For I kind mean... of similar reasons, right? Kind of similar. Well, it, it, Frank. Okay, so I feel like coming into the game and saying, "Hey, there's three alignments: law, neutral, chaos." Mm-hmm. That doesn't take much time. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take a lot of time to communicate that cosmic conflict. Uh, the cleric things, among other things, you got to sit down and do all. I got to make my pantheon, like you were saying before. Like that's a, now that's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Um, and so having to having to having to dictate, specify what is the menu of deities that the cleric could be serving. That's a lot of world building work, and uh, that I wanted to get off the table among fifteen other items. Um, uh, I, and, I, and I do, and I do think that the clerics clash with the pulp sources. I would argue. Like, more I would argue work. that even though you can summarize alignment that quickly, that it still yeah. has all those world building implications. They're just hazier, and you're just setting yourself up yeah. for pain down the road when you realize you hit a gray area and you have to make it up on the fly. Uh, which is rough. Um, and uh, so I would rather no. just say, it's just gray. It just is gray. There is no alignment. You know, creatures behave in the way creatures behave based on the society they grew up in and their life experiences. And not everyone is identical to every other one. And they're going to make their choices based on me role-playing that character. That, uh, that, that, that wipes out too much world cultural mythology over the centuries that I would like to hook into. I would like to hook into there's a supernatural world where things are actually different and monsters are really inherently opposed to humans and that kind of um you know what what's up with Cthulhu now? It's like it's <laughs> like if he'd been if he'd had if he gets some therapy, is he gonna be yep. You know, it's going to be okay in the future. I don't know. Uh, I feel like I, I want to be active yeah. monsters in the world. Yeah, I, I, I'm not saying you shouldn't have that stuff. I'm not saying get yeah. rid of that stuff. I'm just yeah. saying I want to make those decisions per campaign, and I want to change my mind between campaigns. I don't need that to be consistent, um, and I don't want a mechanic that's forcing my hand in a certain direction. Yeah, I, it's clear we disagree on this. So yeah, that's we do. fun. I think that's we fun. Um, yeah. I think that's great. Uh, there's there's no problem. There's room, I think, for both for both opinions here. Is this a schism? Is this a schism <laughs> for wandering DMs? Is this how this? Can we get over this? Will they get over this? Yeah, yeah. Now, or admittedly, this... I have yet to run a game where I've sat down with my players and said, "We're just not going to use alignment." I'm eager to okay. do it. Yeah. I'm at. Yeah. I'm now at the point where I'm eager to do it. 
Um, maybe my opinion will change once I've tried it out and I go, oh, it causes these problems. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. But I want to give it a whirl and see what it's like. You know, as I think about it, I, mean, I can think about keeping it, you know, I, I, I can see some advantages to keeping it hazy. Is it ties into a very broad, you know, two-point light world, dark world uh, mythology that's common to many, 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 you know, myths and cultures over the centuries. And, you know, real world and spirit world and, upper, you know, upper world and lower world kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I can see wanting to keep it hazy so that you can interpret it on a campaign by campaign basis of, uh, you know, maybe these are alignments in the Anderson sense. Maybe, you know, uh, maybe, you know, there's a, like, like uh, I'm going to look at August Derleth with the, the, the Cthulhu mythos, which among some people is going to put me on the bad, the bad side of this, of you've got elder gods versus ancient ones and it sort of has at least the flavor of good and evil a little bit maybe that's where your law and chaos um is coming Mm -hmm. in of two essentially just opposed types like you're talking about so maybe there's some advantages to keeping it hazy but yeah um i think that hooking into this cosmic there's 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 essentially different sides in the universe and you have to pick a side and be committed obviously doesn't happen in the real yeah. world it's yeah. not an actual thing in the real I mean, world so in my fantasy i kind of want that to be yeah. an escape i i i i was with you dan until the like yeah. and you have to pick a side right like like i yeah. i'm as you're describing it my brain immediately went to star wars like you know yeah. in star wars you have a light side and a dark side and a force right. that binds the universe together and like right. a vast majority of of characters who are like yeah i don't believe that exists Maybe they're wrong, yeah. but they're there. They're present, and yeah. they're not. They're not basing their entire lives on am I light side or dark side. They're just like, yeah, that's just not for me. <laughs> Which I think is really interesting. Uh, that's fair. I, I'll, ret- I'll. I mean, I'll. I'll. I'll great. I'll retract it. I'll. Re- I mean, you don't have to pick a side. Fine. That's great. You, great. You, okay. You, now you I'm on board. Let's, or, I want to play this game. Is, yeah. Great. You don't have to pick a side, <laughs> but. Um, um, but I think that in a lot of these, fi- I think in a lot of these fictions, the main characters wind up at some point having to pick a side, right? So um, at, at some point, Han Solo comes in at the end of Star Wars to, you know, you know, commit to the to the rebels and actually ta- attack Darth Vader. So I think that right. But he, did he do that because the light side of the force forced him to do that, or because he's a human and can make his own arbitrary decisions? And in this case, decided. You know that the bonds of friendship were more important. He he, you know he picked a side. <laughs> he picked a side. Uh, did and he? You you know you get you get to you get to do that regardless <laughs> of where you came from. You get to pick a side. Yeah. All right. Well, we are about out of time. I just want to share. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know that hour. That was. This is this is classic yeah, wandering yeah. DMs. With it is classic. Wait, let's that. let's close out here with this with this yeah. with this thing from Ragnar, who says, you know, to be fair, you guys, your initial premise for this show was that you argue all the time in real life. Uh, yep. This is what the show is all about, 100%. I mean, I think the thing that bothers us so much, Dan, is that is that we do argue about stuff all the time, but usually we're able to find a middle ground somewhere. And I think I think there is a middle ground here for both of us. And, you know, I would be happy to play in your games where there is alignment. I hope you would play in my games where there is not alignment just to see what they're like. <laughs> You know, of course. You know, frankly, I am still on the fence about the whole cleric thing, and uh, I'm I, in the back of my head. When there's some mythological time where I'm going to have enough time to sit down and give the clerical spells the treatment you gave to the magic user spells, and run an OED game with clerics. Right. Now, the, the really the only reason I haven't done it is I just don't have the time for that. I have too many things, <laughs> too many other projects. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, so. and that's that. that frankly. That work effort is a major part of the reason why I get rid of clerics. Is they're just too, they're, 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 there's just too much world building that you have to put around them. Anyway, that's another episode. That's that was another episode of why why where is Dan and Paul on the on on on, on clerics and why do we get rid of them? Because that's a whole separate thing. Yep. Yep. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. The other thing I'm going to say to our viewers is actually so so me and Paul are engaged in this contention sufficiently with sufficient curiosity. 
that uh, I didn't have time to read all the comments. So at, once this is archived on YouTube, I'm going to go back and I'm going to read all the comments and I might possibly put some responses in the YouTube comments afterwards. So thank you so much for for, for participating and I apologize that I didn't get a chance to... to I, I, Paul was enough. Frankly, Paul is a, is a, is a tough enough debater that that was all. I, that's uh, that he filled my hands on this episode. Uh, Here's that. I, yeah, I attempted, yeah. I attempted to get my, get the alignment point across that I made. Excellent, excellent. So, folks, uh, if you have thoughts on alignment, keep it, lose it, change it. Uh, definitely leave us comments in the in the comments of this video. You know, keep it civil, keep an open mind. But uh, we would love to hear. You know, wh where has it worked for you? Where has it not worked for you? Uh, how do you want to use it? Maybe we'll maybe we'll do a follow up at some point. Um, certainly, I'm sure Dan and I will continue to disagree on this, and come up with other um, other ideas and other experiments to do in our future games. You like three points? You like nine points? You like tau points? Have, like, well, the other thing is maybe someone has seen an objective set of rules for mechanically adjusting alignment. For mechanically, that would be really tracking. interesting to see where someone is on the you know and personally I'm, I'm i'd be happy with just even a single dimension on that uh maybe, maybe you've seen rules on objectively tracking alignment that i have that i have missed and i've been looking for those for many many years i'd love to see them so maybe maybe clue us into those awesome uh, so that's it. Right. That's uh, yep. if, if you're new uh, to the show, remember that you can like and subscribe and follow us on a bunch of different social media like Facebook and Twitch and YouTube and Twitter. Uh, we're on the handle Wandering DMs, all one word on all those sites. You can also listen to our shows in audio-only podcast format if you prefer. You can find those on our website at wanderingdms.com. You can also find them on the variety of uh, podcast carriers like uh, Google Podcasts and iTunes and Spotify. If you're listening to us on one of those carriers, please take a moment to rate and review us. That helps us out a lot. It really does. As usual, uh, we have a Patreon, and we have a number of people who um, who support the show via Patreon every month, and we could not do all the different shows that we're doing without their support. So if you'd like to join them in supporting Wandering Dems, you can find that on patreon.com slash wandering DMs, and we really appreciate that. Uh, among the things we do, uh, Tuesday night we'll be back with a dev diary for more updates on our upcoming uh, big-name tournament D&D show, the Big Bad will be releasing in the fall. So Tuesday we'll have this week's updates on that. A new character will be released tomorrow, things like that. Thursday, Paul has his Warhammer D&D smash-up. Uh, Saturday, um, we will not have a war game show because of reasons. And then That's uh, right. we will be back. That's right. <laughs> I had to think a minute yeah. for what those reasons were. That's right. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we'll be back with another talk show next Sunday as we normally are at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So we hope that you'll join us again next week for another thought-provoking discussion. We'll see you then.